Welcome back to the Investor Coaching TV show. We're talking about the investment vortex. It's one of the best tools that I know of to help keep you more disciplined, to help you know what to expect from your portfolio. Now, last segment, we talked a little bit about the range of returns that you might expect from a long-term growth portfolio if you only hold that portfolio for one year. I can't tell you how many times people will invest and they invest in a long-term growth portfolio and they go, well, you know, I, I didn't make money last year in my portfolio. <laughs> and I laugh and I go, well, so what? That's a one-year time horizon. It's a six to nine-year time horizon portfolio. If you lost money in that portfolio, it's within expectations as long as it falls between these two extremes. And it can even fall outside of those extremes and still be working. If it is within this 95% confidence level, I really don't worry about it a whole lot. Now, what if I hold a portfolio for a longer period of time? What we see is that we close in on the expected return as time goes on, and it gets really close the further out this direction that we go. Now, what are those ranges for the long-term growth portfolio? Well, if I hold that portfolio and one year later, my portfolio is 20% down from what I started with, what this is telling me is, hey, you know what? That's within expectations. It's not something to sweat, not something to worry about. What do we know about markets? They go up and they go down. I used to joke with a guy in the radio show. I did my radio show next to this guy that was actually a DJ and he would come in and his, his name was CJ, CJ the DJ. And he'd walk in and he'd go, hey Paul, what's the market doing? I said, it's going up and it's going down, it's going up and it's going down. And he'd laugh and he'd go his, his way and I'd go my way. But that's it. Markets go up and markets go down. We expect that. We could have a risk of a 41% return almost in this portfolio. But as time goes on, I close in on that expected return with a high degree of certainty. Now, if I go with an aggressive mix, this is a person that is younger. They've got a lot more time. Their main worry is outpacing inflation. With a person like that, now notice how much wider this vortex is than the previous three vortexes were. So what we see is that that has the highest expected return as well. And what, we'll look, what we're looking at here is the same thing. As I hold on to this portfolio, I close in on the expected return. The ranges are higher. You know, I could have a 28% negative with this type of a portfolio if I hold it for only one year. This is why we don't want, if I need to spend all my money in one year and I'm going to pull it all back out, it's not a real good idea to put all your money in the stock market if you need to spend it all within one year because this could happen. Now, again, it's not likely. It doesn't happen very often, very, very infrequently. We can really point to three periods in history where something like this would have happened. The Great Depression the mid-1970s, and 2008. Really, other than that, doesn't happen very often. And also, this doesn't happen very often where we get returns that are that high. But this is the range. These are the ranges of returns. And again, we see that we close in on that expected return. Now, this is kind of an interesting graph because what it does is it superimposes all of these graphs on top of each other. So what we're seeing right here is the widest vortex, that's the aggressive mix. Now that's the long-term growth mix right there. See, it's a narrower type of a vortex. And then we see the moderate mix and we see the conservative mix right here. And what we're seeing is that as we superimpose these things, the one as we go wider, it shifts up a little bit because the expected return is higher. So what we're seeing right there is how much riskier an aggressive mix is than a conservative mix, really. Our one-year returns, there's a much greater range. Now here is why investors fail. Oh boy, they fail like crazy when it comes to this because they don't know what to expect. What they tend to do, Dalbar shows us that the average investor only holds investments for about three years. So let's say that they have a perfectly mixed portfolio and then what happens is three years later it didn't do what they thought it would do or they didn't know what to expect and it performed less than what they thought it would. Then what they do is they switch and even if they come up with a perfectly efficient portfolio and they come up with B portfolio what happens is they start all over again. They've got a brand new vortex with all new ranges of returns and then a few years later that doesn't work out and all of a sudden they switch again. The average investor only 
only holding three years. That's what you're seeing here. So they keep changing and they keep starting all over again. And the net result is that they end up with this wide vortex. They never close in on the expected return of the portfolio and they have this huge wide range. Now, what is the actual return? What did we see about the actual return of investors over 20 years, according to Dalbar Research out of Boston? Right there, see that red line? That's what they're actually getting, which is way less than the market because of this destructive process. And it's really expensive. Now, let's face it, the brokerage firms love it because every time you change, they make new money, new commissions, new trading costs. They make more money when you change and constantly churning that portfolio. And it is because of all of these emotions that we tend to do it. So what do we need to do as investors? Well, what we need to do is set up a portfolio based on our time horizon and make sure we don't change it. Don't constantly readjust it based on what's going on in the marketplace, based on what we're hearing. Realize that if your portfolio is performing within our parameters here, everything is okay. Just sit tight. Let the portfolio do its job. One of my friends likes to put it this way. What's your time horizon on investing? It ought to be lifelong. Once you set up the proper portfolio, you don't make constant changes. Another solution, make sure you know what the answers are to the 20 must answer questions, that you, things that you should know as an investor. And that's exactly what this booklet is about right here. We have the investor awareness guide. It talks about the things that you need to know as an investor to have more peace of mind. Toward the back of the book, we actually have those 20 questions. And what we have everybody do when they come in here is they open up, they bring in this book and they answer these questions. Do you know how the market works? Do you know how to define your investment philosophy? Do you have an investment philosophy? Do you know your personal risk tolerance? Do you know how diversification works and how to measure diversification in your portfolio? Do you predictably and, achieve, and, and, and reliably achieve market returns with your investments? Do you have an investment policy statement? If you're one of these investors that go, what did he just say? An investment policy statement? I'll take that as a no. It's something that pension plans by law must have. And if they should have them, you should probably have one too. Do you know the three warning signs that you're gambling and speculating with your money versus prudently investing it? These are the 20 questions that you should be able to answer to be a more confident investor. And hopefully you're more confident about expectations after today's show. We'll catch you next week right here on the Investor Coaching TV show.